Greetings Internet, welcome to Aaron Plays. In this episode I'll be continuing my ambush, mission one, and I'm going to give a now reef, a reef, a brief recap of what's happened so far and the mission objectives. So I've been, I've come on the board from over here, so from anywhere from between this point and this point, and I can exit anywhere from between this point and this point. My objectives are this building, this building, and getting someone onto this ridge over here. Looks like another objective that hasn't been stated as such. There's a down plane that occurred part way through the mission so far here. Down allied plane, so I'm assuming there'll be a pilot there that might need rescuing. However, I have been pinned down by effective fire from a German officer here. And there was a group of two, or two soldiers at this point, but now there's only one, one left. The other one's incapacitated and wounded. However, I've suffered two incapacitated and one of my guys has been actually killed in action. So my squad started with eight. I am now down to five active members. So do I push on? Or do I call it quits? I'm going to see what actually happens at the by the end of this action round to determine that. Because um, I say I'm, I'm not quite at 50% losses yet. So I think I will push on. If I can take these Germans out, then I'll try for at least this objective here. And see if I can rescue the pilot. That's the plan at the present moment. So we're, so we're in action rounds, the, the game gets split between what's called operations and actions. This is continuing action rounds from the previous episodes. So let's see what happens. So the first thing we determine is, is that, well, all my men are aware. So there will be an awareness step, but as they're all aware, we, we skip that. And we go straight into random events. There is a chance of a random event occurring. So let's roll the dice for that. I roll two dice. Uh, everything's on done, done in t D10s. I've just rolled two sixes, so their numbers are added together for a random event. And so that's a 12. Okay, so oh, this is where I'm using the paragraph mission cartridge view sleeve. And it tells me to go to sighting nine if i've already had sighting nine which i have i ignore that that'll be just something along which we've already seen so that's the random event i now determine initiative and that's rolling 2d10 i use a a blue and a green blue being for the germans green for myself and compare the two numbers i've rolled a one the germans have rolled a three so the germans are the advantaged in this so they run the initiative if it was a tie the germans win it okay as at this point, we're using those two numbers that I fill in this box here. So looking at the, this German here, X, he's the officer. Looking at his number three, with the advantage, he'll be getting one action. Myself, Ambrose, my sergeant, looking at the number one, with disadvantage, so that's the blue line here, he'll be getting one action. Bell on one on this row here, he'll be getting two actions. So the numbers of the on the dice are in this grid here. Dylan, guy with the uh, Brownings, he's got looking again. Look at one. He's fine. He's there. Uh, now look at disadvantage. He gets one action. Soldier P for the Germans. Paul. Let's call him Paul. Okay, he's got a, um, a three, so yeah, he gets one one turn. Um, Hudson, my guy here, he's on a one. <gasps> he panics. That means they both panic. Gibson and Hudson panic. Uh, that's not too good. Okay, so that's that grid filled out now. I've 
I've been trying to seek some clarity here um, from my own own mind in how this grid is actually used. Up to this point, I've been using it. So this is two turns. So the markers are in here for two turns for the advantage player, two turns for the disadvantage player, one turn for the advantage, one turn for the disadvantage. So I've been going, right, so this is the individual guy's initiative. So I've been going along, along here and then going along here. And then once everyone's had the, who had two turns have done their two turns going into the one turn guys along this row and then along this row. I read the rules for that section again. I don't think that's correct. What I think I've got to do is so if we look here at initiative four, so we do the guy here who has two turns, he'll be going first because no one else has two turns. When we come down the one turn row, I think it goes down in initiative order. So this guy will get his turn, then Ambrose will be getting his turn. We look at this way. Then we look in here and there's no one. We look here, so he'll get his turn, then he'll get his turn. Now, if that's correct, well, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure which way. So any comments on that one will be much appreciated. Um, let me know if I'm doing it wrong or right, wrong the first way, which I've done for the previous videos. I'm going to be drawing it this way on this video. And hopefully some of you guys will make a comment saying, no, 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 you were right the first time. Or no, 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 you are right the second time. So again, comment appreciated. So that's how I'm doing it now. So the first guy who will activate this turn. Ah, wait a minute, that's not correct. We've got the roll for the German action number. I rolled a one for that. So that tells me that they'll be looking at the one option on their cards. So let's move back to where the action actually is. So we have one wounded German here and this officer who had a machine pistol but is now down to a Luger because his machine pistols run out of ammunition. So we're looking at Bell who is here crouched. We know that Hudson and Gibson are panicked. So I'm going to turn those to the side to remind myself that they're panicked. So I've actually only got three active guys. So Bell is going to tell Dylan to have an extra turn. He's going to oi Take out that officer while he's crouching. He shouts across into the cover. So that effectively means that Bra um, Bell has used his turn to give Dylan a second turn. So Dylan will take that turn and fire at the officer. Aimed fire. So the first thing I've got to do when I take an aimed fire is determine if I am, if their weapon jams. 5% chance, you roll 53, ain't jammed. Okay, so I then look at the fire table. Now it's telling me, he's using one, two, three, four hexes. With the Browning, it's an automatic rifle, he's within short range. He has a basic five to hit. I know that Dylan's plus one on his weapon skill, that makes him six. So six or less, however, we now look at the target. Target's in wood, and he is crouched, that's minus three. So I need a three or less to hit. He rolls an eight, which is unfortunate, so that is a miss. And that's his turn done. So he now goes down to only having one turn left. Next up, is the German officer, this guy here. So we know he's rolled action one, so I now have to check on his card. So that's why I look at this here. Um, again, so I look at the die roll. So I focus zero one, the wrong condition three, it tells me to look at paragraph 808. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
808. So I get the paragraph book out and I read what 808 says. So I've got bullet points, so I follow this down until one actually applies. So it says no if no active target in sight, crouch, he's got plenty of active targets in sight. If one or two active targets in sight, crouch, he's got more than one or two active, he's got one, two, three targets in sight. So we look at the next one. If three or more active targets in sight, fall prone. That's useful because he's not firing. That makes him harder to hit, but he's decided that discretion is the better course of action. And falls prone. Okay, that's his action done. So he's now complete. Next up will be Ambrose. Sergeant Ambrose down here. Okay. He's only got one action. This is brush here, can't see through there. He can only see here. But I want him to take these guys out in this corner here. I wonder if we've got the camera can see that. Uh, should I zoom out a little bit? There we go. Okay, so yeah, I want him to take... Oh, you've got incapacitated guy, so he's out of action. But I want to take this wounded guy out because he's still getting the occasional shot off. Not very effectively, but... So, Ambrose will actually move forward. So, he'll go... Brush is two to move through, so he's got four moving points, so it's two four and then he'll take his free stance change to go into crouch and that's him done next up is back to bell okay Dylan's that you can't give I don't know, could he give Dylan another shot? That would mean Dylan would have three. I don't think he's allowed to have three. So he can't tell Dylan to go again. I have to wait for Dylan's action, activation. So I think it might be time that I might have to. Whoops, I'm getting carried away, aren't I? Yeah, just like slight backtrack here. I've still got to check these paragraphs as I go through there. Yeah, I'm getting so focused on these guys that there could be other people over here that might have to activate. So, J9, I better check that. So anyone who was screaming at the screen, no, you didn't check those paragraphs? Well, I got back to, I remembered eventually. So, yeah, J9. Okay. It's telling me to look at the sighting two paragraph. We've had sighting two, and then we're looking at K10. Oh, that's a new one. That's sighting one. Okay, so let me just put him back on that. Sighting one. I haven't had sighting one. 299. All right, so I better check that out and see what that is. 299. Oh, it's not another German. 299. Roll one die. Note three conduct activation check. If successful, C28. 48, no effect. Alright, okay. Well, got various of these. So roll a one die. So he rolls an eight. No effect. Okay, so nothing happens. Alright, so now. Now he's done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right, so back to. Bell, Corporal Bell. Okay, so I think to take this officer out, I'm going to have to cross this stream and get into those woods there. Um, I might have to take him on in fisticuffs. So crossing the stream costs boom, boom, boom. two movement points. Can be entered only while standing. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Right, so he stands up. That's a free action, because he's not wounded. He then moves into the stream in I3. So let's check that paragraph, I3. Uh, 
that's telling me to use look at sighting two nothing okay so it's two movement points and then he goes into the woods here for four movement points which finishes his turn what's that turn i can't i can't do it he's, he's already had his free stance change any additional stance changes cost a movement point so let's um let's check that wood so that is j2 which is none nothing happens in that hex okay so that's bell done we have dylan now ah one thing I didn't do check for Dylan was on that last shot, it was ammo, 25% chance that you ran out of ammo. He rolled 36, so he didn't. So now we're back to Dylan. As this prone chap is now such a hard target, I'm gonna take Dylan to shoot the wounded guy before he gets to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Still a short range shot. So that is a nine, so range of nine. That is a five value of five. Dylan is a six, because he's got plus one. So it makes it a six. Now the guy is in a wood, but he's crouching, which we know is minus three. I think he's crouching, isn't he? Yeah, he's crouching. There's an extra, oh, no, it's, it's gotta be an active guy. So minus three, so it's again a three or less. He rolls a three. Okay, good shot, Dylan. Okay, the effect is four. So I will look on the automatic rifle with a four. He's incapacitated him. That takes him out. That wound becomes a KIA, uh, not KIA, an incapacitated. I'll tell you what, there's no point to, they're both now incapacitated, so I'll well put them to both like that. So Dylan is the one that's been most effective in my eyes, to be perfectly honest. He's, he killed this guy and he's incapacitated both these guys. So, well done Dylan. He should be getting some re rewards at the end of the scenario if he survives. That's him done. Soldier P became out of action. What do they call this row? In inactive. So, and Gibson and Hudson panicked. So that would be the end of that action round. Let's push on. So we're going to the next action round where we check, well the first thing we do is awareness, there's no need for that, so it's the event phase again. We roll a seven. S9, we've already had S9, that's sighting 9, so that's a no event. Then we roll for initiative. 2 8s, therefore the Germans have the initiative. So filling in this chart here. There we go, does that help? All right, so first of all, look at the German here. He's rolled an eight. That gives him, with the initiative, one turn. Three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, all ten numbers are there. Okay, so he goes into the advantage columns there. Um, Sergeant Ambrose with an eight goes there. Bell with an eight goes there. Dylan with an eight. Right, I have to check to see if he panics. Okay, because the red number eight is there. Is he in command? I have moved Corporal Bell out of his command range. So he is out of command. So Dylan panics. Don't know why he panics. It's just it's been an effective shot, but there we go. That's the way the chits work. G1, uh, sorry, I'm looking at eight, number eight. Uh, he gets one action, so that means Hudson gets one action from the same same place. So yes, command. All right, so let's just focus on here. So the way command works is, to be in command, you've got to be within two hexes of any of your commanders, which in this case is Ambrose, and Bell, Dylan is beyond the two hexes, so he doesn't get Bell's initiative, and Dylan's initiative is only two. To be in command, it's got, if it's less than five initiative, and you're on those little red numbers there, you panic. And so in this case, Dylan panics. He's the only one that's panicked, but there we go. I didn't check his ammunition from his last shot. Yeah. He rolled 20 out of 25, so therefore, no automatic rifle, but it's 50. So yeah, he consumes ammo. So he uses his first clip. I might have actually, I'm gonna actually cross off a second clip because I think I was looking at 25s on his other shots. I think at least one of those, so was less than 50, it's 50 on the, the automatic rifle that they consume ammo. Interesting. Okay, so that's this chart filled in. I'm going to zoom back out now. So we've got the German who's prone, and we now have now to roll the German activation number, which is three. So I look. And it's the German officer first. He is condition three, rolls of three. I'm looking at paragraph 913. What does that tell me to do? He's currently prone. If actor German soldier occupies T8, C8, so T8 no one T8 is the wooden building off of here. So one of the objectives. So no. If three or more German soldiers have been killed, incapacitated or captured, crawl into hex N5. We have got one German killed and two incapacitated. So that comes into effect. Go to hex crawl into hex N5. He's pulling back. He's pulling back. Interesting. Go to condition four. Ooh, the scenario has just ex escalated. Okay, so we have a condition change part way through an action round. The first thing we'll do is I've got to change the card. So it's condition four, and that's the highest it goes in this mission. So I also then check that, that box on the card on, on here to show we are now on to condition four. Then I do a paragraph check for every hex occupied by an active 
to be set to. For all US occupied hexes, beginning with the last number. It doesn't say the backwards, so all US occupied, starting with the last number, which would be, um, it says lowest number. So I work, I work, I assume, this way down rather than along and then down. So the lowest number we have is G2. Nothing happens. Then we have I, J2. It says event. I think I ignore ignore all event checks. Okay. All right. The next one we have is H three. That says sighting two, so we ignore that because we've had that sighting before. Next one down would be I-5. Again, a sighting two, no change there. Next one would be, oh, should have done this one first, F-5, yeah. Okay, well, F-5 says none. Continuing down, we have J6. Again, a sighting two. We then have H8. Again, a sighting two. And finally, K10. That's a sighting 1299. So that could potentially be something because I didn't mark sighting 1 last time because it said no, nothing happened. So, go to paragraph 299. Roll one die, not to three, conduct it right. So let's see what it says after rolling one die. I roll a four. No effect. Because there's no effect, I don't mark that sighting one as occurred. Okay, so that's the paragraph check, and now I'll continue with the, the rest of the round. So the German officer's pulled back, and that's his turn. Okay, Sergeant Ambrose is here. Hmm. I think I need to get them across the stream as well. See, the original plan was to get to the, the building. Um, we don't want that German officer getting away. Or do we? Do I follow the original plan? That's a good question. Okay. He has no viable targets at the present moment. We know there's a German officer over there somewhere. We don't know he's an officer, but we know there's a German. A German. I know he's an officer. These guys wouldn't know. Um, deal with what you know at the present moment. So, yeah. Ambrose stands up. Has his three stance change. and moves into here, into the stream for two, and that's hex L9. Which is T1. 
still still telling me to look at that paragraph 299. So we know there's something out there because it keeps telling me to look at that paragraph 299. I just don't know what it is, where it is, and who it is. So, all right, I pick things up, I put them down, and then I put them down where I can't find them. Right, okay, there we go. Roll the dice again. I rolled a five, still no effect. So, and then he'll move into this wood hex. Now, is that wood or brush? Looks more like, well, there's a bit of a tree in there, so it's a wood hex. So in there, the four, and that is M9. M9. Nothing. None. Okay. So that's Ambrose done. Next up, Corporal Bell. So he's going to move towards the, the officer. So it's two in the K3. That's telling me to look, ooh, that's a new one as well. Sighting six, three, two, six. Sighting six, I haven't ticked that off. No, three, two, six. Roll one die. Roll a nine. Three, two, six. Roll a nine. Conduct a PC check if successful. C three, three, three. All right. So I've got to look at Corporal Bell's perception. His perception is six plus two is eight. So eight or less, and he's seen something. He sees something. He rolls a one. So three, two, six is successful. No, yeah, it's successful. C three three three. S six activate. Oh, let's activate another German. S six. Right. I'll pause at that point to set that up. Okay. So we have a new German activated. He's been activated in. It says O four here, and it tells me to use soldier fifty three. Um, here he is. Um, he's armed with a bolt action rifle and a grenade. He's got initiative of two, perception of four, weapon skill zero, movement allowance of four. He gain, gives me an additional victory point. So that takes now my victory point total to five. Okay. Um, he's to, now, reading the paragraph, I'll read it all out in its entirety. So, activate German at 53 in hex 04. Done that. Standing. He's standing. Commence rounds. Well, we're already in rounds. So, US advantage. So, I ignore all this information. Soldier just made his PC check is automatically aware. Doesn't matter. All aware US soldiers that do not panic receive two turns this round. Again, doesn't matter. Go to condition two. Well, we're already at condition four. So, I don't go back to condition two. I stay at condition four. So everything after the, it says commence rounds or already rounds, I can ignore. Now with him becoming active, um, it didn't say he has X amount of turns or such forth. I need, now need to roll a new action round marker. So the um, action number, the German number was three. Their new number is five. So I check that soldier to see if he gets any turns. Is Okay, and the Germans were on disadvantage, so he will get a turn. I'll just show you on here. I just placed placed it here. The German five is there, so the marker is equal to his initiative rating. So we'll see what it'll do in a moment. Right. Okay. So moving on. That was him moving in there for two movement points I think you better crouch 
he started standing, so that's a free change rule. I tell you what, we'll go into here then. So that's K4. K4. Nothing additional. And then we'll crouch. So that is bell completed. Next up will be Hudson and Gibson. Okay, so Hudson will stand, which is free. He'll then go into I9. So sighting two, we've already had that, and then move into J9. Again, sighting two. That's done, he can't. Oh, wait a minute. Hudson's only got three movement points. <coughs> so he'll go back into crouch then. That's his free st uh, movement point. Yeah, these two are a little bit on the slow side. Dylan panicked, didn't he? All right, so we'll have Gibson, free change, and go one, into H4. I think we've seen everything we will need to see over here, but I still have to check just in case. Now that's fine. There's one, two, you know, there's nothing, uh, no. Yeah, there was nothing there, and then he'll go into crouch. That's both of those guys done. That just leaves this new German soldier to go to finish off the round. Okay, so we're looking at action number five. Five with condition four. That tells me to go to paragraph 919. If in, in activation hex C802, he is in his activation hex. Otherwise, right, otherwise 802. Crouch. So in other words, he's seen me. Then conduct best fire at closest target. Well, he only has one target. So he crouches and then fires. Full prone after fire if free stance change available. Well, he doesn't have that available. So he'll do his best fire at closest target. He only has one target. He's armed with a bolt action rifle. He is one, two, three, four hexes away. Which sounds like a short range shot. There's a bolt action. It is. First of all, I have to test for jam. Why? No. No jam. So it's basic to hit is five. He has no weapon skill advantage, so it stays five. And then looking at the terrain, I am crouching in a wood, which is minus three. That takes his five down to a two. He rolls a four, which is a miss. Which ends that action round. Can't fall prone because he doesn't have a free stance change because he changed from standing to crouch. If he'd already been crouched, he would then gone prone. So he can't. And that's the end of that action round. Okay, well, I'm going to end this video at this point. I've done two action rounds. I was intending to do only one, but the other one seemed to be over quite quickly. So, and there was only one guy on the board. Now there's two, so the action rounds continue. I hope you're enjoying the video and what you've seen. This is um, hotting up nicely. As I say, I'm moving further this way. The original plan had been to come this way. Now it looks like due to where the Germans are, um, I have to deal with those guys. I can't just let them run around behind me. So the plan has sort of changed. It looks like I'll be going for this building first. So, but we'll see how 
it pans out. I am still three guys down, which I'm not quite conscious of. So, um, yeah, hopefully there's not too many more Germans on the actual board. So, anyway, hit the like if you've enjoyed what you've seen. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, bye internet.